Easter Tuesday. Station at St. Paul. After visiting St. Peter's, it was fitting that the neophytes should at once be brought to the doctor of the Gentiles, beside whose tomb they had learned the first rudiments of the new law of the gospel. Therefore in the lesson from the Acts of the Apostles chosen for today, it is Paul who announces to the faithful the resurrection of the Savior as Peter did on Easter Monday. The Gospel from St. Luke describes the first appearance of Jesus to the Apostles. As the resurrection of our Lord is the central tenet of the Christian faith, so the Divine Wisdom, in order to take away all excuse for the unbelief of the synagogue, willed that the miracle should be proved beyond all possibility of doubt. In the prayer with solemn simple words a rule of life is set forth today surpassing the heights to which any mere human mind could rise. The Church prays that God may grant a baptized realization of all which baptism means inasmuch as it communicates the very life of Jesus Christ himself. In the post-communion the Church teaches that there are two kinds of communion, the sacramental and the spiritual. By the first we partake actually of the body and blood of Christ. By the second we live by the spirit of the Eucharist. As the sacramental communion can be received only at certain times and in certain places, our Lord unites the soul so intimately to himself in the Holy Eucharist that it lives by his spirit and breathes in unison with his heart. Such, in its highest sense, is spiritual communion. O Ramus! O God, who dost continually enrich thy church with new increase, Grant to thy people that they may be their good life hold fast to the sacrament which they have received by faith. Per Dominum Nostrum Iesum Christum Filium Tuum. Amen.